In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a math problem and the different steps you need to take. I like to think of solving a math problem as d doing a puzzle. So, we're going to start with what's given. In a puzzle, what's given would be your puzzle pieces. In a problem, that would be your information. What do you know and what do you wish to know? The next step would be to analyze. In a puzzle, that would be how do these pieces fit together? How do they line up? How do they align? Are there similar colors? So this is all about the building stage of a puzzle. Now, for a problem, that would be the work that goes into the problem. So you would simplify your problem here, and you would also estimate or guess your answer. Think of what would make sense. Now, the next step would be to actually solve. So this is completing the puzzle. And in terms of the problem, it would be finding your answer. The last step would be to check your work. In a puzzle, that's looking at the puzzle and seeing, all right, is there any pieces missing? Is there anything that I can do to straighten the puzzle out? Are there some jumbled pieces here and there? Does everything fit? In terms of a problem, that's evaluating the problem. Logically, does this answer make sense with the information I was already given? Can I put them back together and see the same exact answer in a different way? And that's what evaluating is all about. So let's look at this in terms of an actual problem. Our problem says that there are 10 apples total. You have three, your friend has two, and your teacher has the rest. How many apples does your teacher have? Oh, that's a U and an R. Whoops. All right, so how many apples does your teacher have? Given. We know the total. The total is 10. We also know how many you have. That, reading the problem, is 3. We also know how many your friend has. From reading the problem, that was 2. So what we need to find out is how many our teacher has. So we're going to write teacher and we're going to write a big question mark because that's what we need to find out. Now let's analyze this. Know that the total is 10. So your teacher cannot have more than the total. So she has to have somewhere less than 10. But you know that you already have three of those apples and your friend has two of the apples. So her number is definitely going to be less than 10. And it's going to be three less than three less than 10. And it's also going to be less than 2 less than 10. So we're going to say that her number is going to be somewhere between, I don't know, let's say somewhere between 3 and 10. Now, we're going to go about figuring out how we're going to do this to solve the problem. So the total is 10. We need to take away how many apples we have from the total and take away how many our friend has from the total. So we're going to start with 10, and we're going to take away how many we have from 10. That's going to be 3. And then we're going to take away how many our friend has from 10, and that's going to be 2. 10 minus 3 is 7, so now we're left with 7 apples. But we also need to take away how many our friend has. 7 minus 2 is 5. So we just got the answer is 5. Our teacher has 5 apples. So this we know is 5. Now we're going to check. Does this answer make sense? If we know our total is 10 and we know how many all of us have together, does that equal that total? So we're going to start. We're going to do 3, how many you have, plus how many your friend has, plus how many your teacher has, and see what that equals. 
3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 5 equals 10. Yes, it checks. There were 10 apples total, and we got that there are a total of 10 apples when we add everyone up.